Hi guys, um, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I am a consultant cardiologist and today I wanted to talk to you about something called vasovagal syndrome, okay? Um, one of the uh, uh, common uh, symptoms that as a cardiologist I see is people who have lost consciousness, people who have fainted or blacked out or lost consciousness in whatever way, okay? And this is an incredibly distressing um, symptom for people uh, and it causes a great deal of concern because they don't know why this happened. Um, sometimes it can be associated with injury. The worry is obviously, could it happen again? And if it happens again, what if I'm driving or what if I'm, you know, so, and a lot of times people go into hospital and they get given this diagnosis and they say, well, oh, don't worry. Um, this is called a vasovagal syndrome, or this is a vasovagal attack, go home and forget about it. And um, it's important to understand what a vasovagal uh, episode is, because if you understand that, then you will know what is not a vasovagal episode. And therefore, you know, sometimes I think that when patients go into A&E, they see a junior doctor and the automatic assumption is, oh, this is a vasovagal episode, it's not dangerous. So let me explain a vasovagal episode to you, uh, and then uh, um, we will try and work out ways in terms of differentiating between vasovagal syndrome and other more sinister causes of blacking out or losing consciousness. All right. So here's an analogy. All right. When you're out in your garden, for example, and let me just show you this. You have... Um, you have your uh, your you decide to water your plants for example okay so you decide to water your plants you have your hose pipe attached to the tap and you point your hose pipe in the direction of the plant that you want um, to uh, water okay so by holding the hose pipe horizontally and pointing it to the plant you're able to get the water to hit the plant or the area around the plant all right now Imagine what happens if everything else remains the same, but instead of pointing the, plant, uh, pointing the hose pipe in the direction of the plant, you start pointing the hose pipe upwards. So at this point, what will happen is that the water is not going to hit your plant anymore because you've got this effect of gravity. And instead of the water going this far, Sorry, instead of, say, if I'm holding it like this, instead of the water going this far, if you point it upwards, the water is going to go up and only this far, right? And therefore, the plant will not get the water. So to try and keep things up this way and make the plant get the water, you can only do two things. One is you can squeeze on your hose pipe to try and make the water come out at a greater uh, force so that it hits your plant or you have to turn on the tap and make more water come out in the hope that some will then eventually get to the plant, right? This is what happens with us. When we are lying flat, okay, there is no effect of gravity. So all the blood is uh, going nice, um, is, is getting to the brain, okay? Now, if we were to then change posture, I sit up, or stand up from a lying position, what happens? Similar to the hose pipe, you've just turned things up this way, and therefore now you have the effects of gravity. So the blood which would ordinarily be hitting the back of the brain, which is the furthest point from the ground, can't reach there because gravity is pulling it down. And therefore we are equipped with certain reflexes which come into action straight away, and those reflexes usually involve our heart rate speeding up and our blood vessels, particularly our blood vessels in our legs, squeezing and keeping the blood going up to the brain. Okay, so if all our blood vessels squeeze, then even though gravity is pulling the blood down, the blood vessels have become small, so the blood can't fit and therefore the blood stays up. Okay, that is what happens in a normal person. If it didn't happen, we wouldn't be able to sit up or stand up we would simply fall on the ground as soon as we got up, okay? But we are all equipped with these reflexes, and this is what happens when we change posture. 
Now, in some people, what happens is they stand up, their reflexes come into action, but then rather than holding on, the reflexes become sluggish and the blood vessels start opening up. Now, what happens is that the blood starts going down, okay? Which means that the back of the brain, which is the furthest place away from the ground, starts having blood drained out of it because the blood is now sinking to the ground. So the back of the brain, okay, the occiput controls your vision and your hearing. And the first sign you start getting is visual disturbance or hearing disturbance. So some people will say they feel like they're zoning out. They feel like everyone's voice is getting louder. They feel like their vision is getting cloudy, okay? And then as time progresses, if they don't do anything about it, and what they need to do about it at that point is to lie down, to try and take away the effects of gravity. But if they don't lie down, then the next thing they'll start finding is that their heart starts beating much faster to try and really try and, it, it's really trying to work to keep that blood going, keep more and more blood going. But with those palpitations, then they'll start feeling clammy and they'll become very pale and then they'll essentially collapse, okay? And when they collapse, they fall to the floor. At that point, when they fall to the floor, the effect of gravity has been removed and the blood is able to get back to the brain and therefore they recover, okay? Usually, patients who have vasovagal um, uh, syncope or vasovagal syndrome will not just go like a, like a sack of potatoes. They don't tend to fall like a sack of potato. They tend to swoon or collapse in a heap. They don't usually go boom like that, okay? And most of the times it's because they have had enough of a warning to know that they need to either steady themselves or hold something or something like that. And therefore, they usually don't injure themselves, although some can, okay? Um, so there are three features of vasovagal syndrome which characterize it. Number one, the first thing is it's usually postural, okay? It has to be, it happens in relation to posture, an upright posture, i.e. you don't get vasovagal episodes whilst you're just lying in bed. It usually happens either when you're sitting for a long time or standing for a long time. Number two, there is usually a provocative factor, okay? So, Certain things will provoke these faints or vasovagal episodes. S factors such as if it's incredibly hot. Why is, does heat provoke it? Because when you're hot, you're opening up your blood vessels, you're trying to get rid of the heat. But when you're opening up your blood vessels, that's allowing more blood to sink down. Okay, Because you need your blood vessels to be tight to keep the blood up. Dehydration. Because if you've got less blood in your body, then even if your blood vessels open up slightly, your brain will notice that lack of blood. So if you're dehydrated, if you're warm, if you're very in, in, in a very emotional situation, so you know, you've received bad news or you're very uh, stressed or anything like that, that can do it. Uh, if your blood sugars are low, that can do it. Um, People often say when they see things like uh, the blood being taken, then that can do it. Okay, so there's usually a provo provoking factors, and it's usually in relation to an upright posture. And finally, there's usually a prodrome, which means that there is a warning. You will find that the vision will get affected. There'll be blurring. Or there'll be the buzzing of the ears. There'll be the clamminess, there'll be the sensation of palpitations. And if you have those features, then it is likely you have vasovagal syndrome. If on the other hand, you don't have these features, then you should be careful about someone's just saying, oh, you've had vasovagal syndrome. And it's important in particular, if you have no um, uh, prodrome and no warning, i.e. you're just walking along and then bam, out like a sack of potatoes, that is not a vasovagal episode. That is a much more sinister thing, okay? Uh, similarly, um, vasovagal syndrome doesn't usually cause injury, but if you are uh, just walking along and you go down, boom, sack of potatoes, 
and you injure yourself, you break something or you really uh, fracture your face or something like that, then that is unlikely to be vasovagal syndrome. I'm always very, very wary of diagnosing vasovagal syndrome in older people because older people, you know, people who are above the age of 70, 80, they, it, it's much more likely that their collapse is due to something more serious. But in younger people, it is far more likely that they have vasovagal syndrome. And in particular, I get a lot of patients who come to me, young patients, you know, 20-year-old girl, uh, they'll say, look, you know, I've always been a bit of a fainter. I used to faint as a child. Uh, but on this occasion, it happened much worse. And I, I know in my own mind, this is probably vasovagal syndrome. Okay, vasovagal syndrome is not dangerous, but it can be very inconvenient and can be embarrassing because you can be, you know, at a party or something like that. And next thing you find yourself on the floor and everyone around you and it spoils everyone's mood, etc. So vasovagal syndrome, although it's not dangerous, it can be inconvenient and it can be embarrassing. And the tricks are that if you are someone who is getting these faints due to vasovagal syndrome, the first thing you should do is increase the amount of water you are drinking. Even if you're drinking tons, you should increase it even further. And the reason you increase it even further is because if you are overhydrated, then even if your blood vessels open up, there's so much blood in you that even though some sinks, some will still stay up and supply the brain and therefore make it less likely. Number two, salt is good, okay? Most people are under the impression salt is bad. It may be bad if you have, if you're elderly and you've got high blood pressure, etc. But if you're a young person, salt is good for you, okay? And in particular, in these people where the blood pressure falls like this, salt is very good because salt increases your blood pressure. And if you're collapsing and having vasovagal episodes, it probably means that your blood pressure is actually falling. So drinking, having more salt in your diet is always good if you're suffering from vasovagal syndrome. Number three, it is always worth listening to what your body is telling you. So if you feel the symptoms coming on, the best thing is to try and get onto the floor as quickly as possible, and that will abort the symptoms. And number four, it is uh, <clears throat> sometimes people benefit from these compression stockings, which you can wear, which basically squeeze the blood out of the legs back upwards towards the brain, all right? And they, you can ask your GP for those, and they are very helpful. Number five, it's good to avoid diuretics. It's good to avoid things that make you dehydrated. So carbonated drinks, caffeine, tea, um, very sort of sugary drinks. If you avoid those and drink just water, then that would be much better. It's also good to avoid extremes of temperature. So being in a very hot room, standing for prolonged periods of time can all do it. And if you can understand, if you, if you recognize the things that bring it on, just avoiding those triggers will reduce the likelihood of this happening. Um, um, it's also a good idea to try and keep your blood sugar levels up. So it's always good to be snacking a little bit if you suffer from vasovagal syndrome, because if you do, then you will be less likely to suffer the consequences. Um, and let me just think, is there anything else I can tell you about vasovagal syndrome? Um, sometimes some people benefit from medication, so you can give people medications like fludrocortisone, but generally the majority of people find that just making these changes make a huge difference to their symptoms. If you want to have a positive diagnosis made, then um, uh, you can have something called a tilt table test, where people put, where you're put in different positions for a prolonged period of time, and the effect on your heart rate and blood pressure is measured, and that usually confirms the diagnosis. So, if you are having vasovagal syndromes, the first thing to understand is they're not dangerous. The second thing to understand is why they happen and what brings them on. And the third thing is to try and avoid those things that bring them on. But when you are in that situation, to heed the warning signs and get on the floor as soon as possible. And of course, keeping yourself well hydrated and keeping your salt levels up work wonderfully. All right. So I hope this was helpful. Um, uh, and um, I'm really grateful to you for watching. I'm really grateful to you for subscribing. I'll keep trying to do some more videos. I'm sort of 
I feel reinvigorated and I'm very enthusiastic about getting some more videos out soon. So thank you so much and all the best. Oh, by the way, let me just plug my bits. Okay. So my name is Sanjay Gupta. This is my name, Sanjay Gupta, cardiologist. And uh, this is my uh, website page and my email address, which you can also use to find me on Facebook. Thank you so much. All right. Bye.